Welcome to another video in the graph series and today we are going to see the fourth and the final approach to solve this question find if path exists in graph. So let's look at the question quickly to see a quick summary. Here we are given a graph, we are given the HS, we are given the number of vertices. We have to see if there is a path from source to destination or not. Like in this example, there is no path from 0 to 5 versus over here, there are two paths from 0 to 2. One, there is a direct edge and then there is another path like this. We have already seen three solutions to this question and I highly recommend you to watch them. We represented our graph using adjacency matrix and we did DFS and BFS. And in the last video, we represented our graph using adjacency list and we did DFS. Today in our final video, we will be representing using HSNC list and we will be doing PFS. We are not going to do a detailed dry run or I'm not going to show you how it is going to look like. We are going to directly jump into the code because we have done more or less most of it. We have seen how HSNC list looks like. We have seen how BFS looks like. So I'm sure you are ready to write the code. And if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments. Before we move ahead, I would just like to take a moment to remind you to be consistent and make sure you do not miss any videos in the graph series. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell icon. You will also stay motivated and you have no idea how much your support will mean to me. There is so much of free content available on the channel. There is HLD, LLD, DSA, Advanced C++, tutorials, mock interviews and so much more. So if you think I deserve your support, please subscribe, hit the notification bell icon. And there is obviously a bunch of stuff that I cannot do on YouTube like mock interviews, live interactive classes. So we have educourses.com, we have live courses, self-paced courses with live doubt solving support which both of them we have mock interviews and we have a lot planned in LLD, HLD, Advanced, C++, DSA and so much more you have no idea. So if you want me to be part of your further learning journey process please check it out. The link is in the description and now let's continue. I'm going to get started with C++ code for Java people. You can go, just go to this time and start looking at the Java code and let's get started. Starting with we are given the number of vertices and the edges, we need to form an adjacency list. How does an adjacency list look like? It has a map, right? So there's a map and what is the key? The key is every single node, so it is an integer. And then corresponding to each key, there are a list of nodes that are connected to it. So again, a vector of integers. So these are the neighbors of this particular key, right? So these are the neighbors. So we are going to call it graph itself. And now let's fill the graph. We are going to go through the edges. So for every edge in this edges, we have two values. U is edge of zero, V is edge of one. I am sure you have become an expert in this by now. What are we going to do in this graph of U? So basically when U is the key, I am going to add V. And when V is the key, graph of V, I am going to add U, correct? So I am done forming a adjacency list, basically forming a graph. Now we can do DFS, but before that, because we're dealing with graphs, we need one more thing. What is it? I'm sure you're thinking of it yourself. Yes, you are right. Because we're dealing with graphs, we need to make sure we don't end up visiting the same nodes again and again. So we need a visited array. I can just take a vector of Boolean of bool and I'm going to call it visited. I'm going to initialize the whole thing to false, but what is the size of it? The size is going to be n, n vertices, n is the size. I'm going to initialize the entire thing is false. Initially, we have not visited anything. We are going to start from our source and that is why I'm going to mark my source as visited. So we are done forming the graph. We are done forming the visited array. Now we can get started with BFS. For BFS, what do we need? We need first and first out, what data structure do we use for BFS? We have to go breadth-wise, width-wise. So yes, first and first out, we are going to use a queue. In this queue, I'm going to store my integer itself because that is what is representing each node. And I'm going to call it queue. And obviously in the starting, I'm going to be pushing the source to the queue. Now we have formed the queue. Till when will we keep doing the BFS? Till then when will we keep popping from the queue? Till obviously when the queue doesn't become empty. So while the queue is not empty. I'm going to keep doing this again and again. If at any point I find my answer, I'm going to return true from inside it itself. Otherwise, I'm going to return false outside. Okay. So inside this while loop, what am I supposed to do? First thing that I'm supposed to do is pop out the first element in the queue, the frontmost element, right? I'm going to call it current. So it is queue.front. Remember that in C++, queue.front 
just gives you the frontmost element. You also need to do what you also need to pop it. Once you have this current node, what do you need to do? You obviously need to check ki, is this equal to the destination of node. So if this becomes equal to your destination, we can just return true from here because we have found a possible path. We have found a destination. We can just return true. Otherwise, we need to go through its neighbors. Now this is adjacency list, not adjacency matrix. In adjacency matrix, in order to go through all the neighbors, what do we need to do? We need to go through the entire row of the adjacency matrix. Over here, because we have adjacency list, in this map, we have pushed only the neighbors. So it is very easy to go through the neighbors. We can just go through it like this. So for every neighbor in graph of current. So whatever list is there, whatever is the vector in that graph of current. For So graph of current is the key, right? So current is the key. When current is the key corresponding to that, there's a vector. And the entire vector is filled with neighbors. We are going to go through it one by one. And for each neighbor, what is the first thing that we need to check if it is not already visited, right? If it is visited, we are going to do nothing. We are going to move ahead. If it is not visited, if the neighbor is not visited, what are the two things that we are supposed to do? First thing that we are supposed to do is add it to the queue, right? So I am adding the neighbor to the queue. Second thing is that I need to mark my neighbor as visited. Remember in the previous video, we had discussed that why we need to mark it as visited while pushing and not while popping, because we need to make sure that we are not pushing the same nodes again and again. And while pushing itself, we need to make them mark as visited that, okay, we have already dealt with it. We have already pushed it. Let's try running it and see we are actually done with the PFS code. Let's submit it and see. Yes, we have passed all the test cases. I hope you're feeling confident about PFS, DFS, adjacency matrix, adjacency list. By now, if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments. Let's quickly discuss the time and the space complexity. So for adjacency list, what are the number of keys? It is order of V. It is a bidirectional graph. So how many connections are going to be there? It is going to be 2E because it is bidirectional. If E is the number of edges that is given to us, it is going to be 2E. So for the time and the space complexity for the graph becomes order of V plus 2E, right? For doing the BFS also, you're going to go through each element only once. So it is going to be order of V plus 2E. You're not visiting the same nodes again and again. You're using an extra queue. So the space complexity for that is in the worst case order of V. Again, for visited array, we are using another order of V. So the total space complexity becomes order of V plus 2E plus order of V plus order of V. And the time complexity becomes order of V plus 2E and order of V plus 2E, which is order of V plus 2E. And now let's get started with the Java code. So here we are given the number of vertices and we are given the edges. Let's get started with forming the graph first. How are we representing the graph? By an adjacency list. How does an adjacency list look like? It is a map, correct? So map of what is the key? It is an integer. And corresponding to each integer, what is there? It is a list of integers, right? That this list, all of these are the neighbors for this key. So there is list of integer. And this entire thing, I'm going to call it a graph. And this is nothing but a hash map. Let's fill this graph by going through the edges one by one. So we are going to write a for loop that for every edge in this edges, we basically have two values. There is u, which is edge of zero. And then there is v, which is edge of one. Now we need to add this u and v in the map. How are we going to do that? In our graph, we are going to say compute if absent because I need to make sure that there is a list. And for this u in the value, I am going to add a new array list. And in this array list, I am going to add v. Similarly, I am going to do when v is the key and when I have to add u, same thing, right? So now we are done forming our adjacency list, our graph. Now, because we're dealing with graphs, what do we need? We need, very good, a Boolean array. How does it look like? It is Boolean visited. What is the size of it? It is n itself. Initially, I can mark the entire thing as false. So for all the values, I am putting visited of i as false. But in the starting, because we will be starting with what? We will be starting with source. I am putting visiting of source as true. Now we are done with the graph. We are done with the visited array. 
to do BFS, what data structure do we need? Yes, first and first out, we are going breadth-wise, width-wise. Yes, what structure do we use for first and first out? Q it is. So Q and what values are we going to store in the Q? It will be in teachers because that is what is representing a node. And I'm going to call it Q itself and new linked list. And we have formed a Q. We are going to start with adding our source. We have initialized a queue also, so now we are finally ready to write the algorithm for BFS. Till where we are going to keep running the algorithm while the queue is not empty, right? So while it is not empty, I'm going to keep running it. If I find the answer in between, I'm going to return true. Otherwise, in the end, I am going to do what? I'm going to return false. So what am I going to do in this algo is, first thing that I need to do is, I need to take out the front element, right? So I can call it current and I am going to just do Q dot remove. So that is going to remove also and it is going to give me the front most element. Now I need to check is this current equal to my destination. If that is the case, what am I going to do? I found my answer. I can just return true. Otherwise, otherwise I need to go through all the neighbors. Now this is adjacency list, not adjacency matrix. In adjacency matrix, in order to go through all the neighbors, we have to go through the entire row in the adjacency matrix. That is not the case. In adjacency list, all the values that we have added in this adjacency list are actually neighbors of that particular key. So it is very easy to go through the neighbors. So for every neighbor, what do we do? How do we get the list for this graph.get current? So basically for this key, there is a list. We are going through the entire list. Each element in that list is the neighbor. Each node is the neighbor in that list. Only those we have added. Now we know the neighbor, but before adding it to the queue, what do we need to check? Yes, we need to check if it is visited or not. Only if the neighbor is not visited, what are we going to do? We are going to add it to the queue. And what are we going to do? We are going to mark it as visited. Yes, remember, that we mark it as visited while adding to the queue and not while removing. Why while adding? We need to make sure we don't add the same nodes again and again to the queue. So while adding itself, we need to mark them as visited. So easy, right? I think we are done with the code. Let's try running it. I hope there are no errors. Just a spelling mistake. I hope there are no errors now. Great. So this runs. Let's submit and see. So yes, we have passed all the test cases. Finally, we are done with the question. We have seen four solutions for this one question. We represented our graph using adjacency matrix, adjacency list. We did PFS, DFS over both adjacency list and adjacency matrix. And I hope all the concepts are completely clear. But before you go, let's quickly look at the time and the space complexity. For adjacency list, how much space do we need? Order of V for the keys. And what are the number of connections? It is order of E. Here it is bidirectional. That is why E becomes your 2E. So your adjacency list space complexity becomes order of V plus 2E. That is the space taken by the graph. What other spaces are we using? We need another order of V for the visited array and another order of V in the worst case for the queue. Because in the worst case, you might have added all the nodes in your queue. So order of V plus 2E plus order of V plus order of V is your space complexity. And what is your time complexity? For BFS and for DFS, you will be visiting all the nodes exactly once. You're making sure that you do not visit the nodes again and again. So your time complexity is order of V plus 2E for both BFS and DFS. I hope you have noticed that in both adjacency matrix and adjacency list, the time complexity is actually same for BFS and DFS. It depends on how you're representing the graph. For adjacency list, it is order of V plus 2E. For adjacency matrix, it is order of V square. We will be comparing BFS, DFS, different algorithms in future videos as well. So stay tuned. I hope you have subscribed and hit the notification bell icon so that you do not miss the future videos in the series. And I hope you're liking it a lot. If you have any questions, I'm here to help you out. And if you want to be part of my live courses, if you want to have live doubt solving sessions with me, you can just check out theedukourses.com. The link is in the description. And I hope I can be part of a learning journey. And thank you so much for watching the video. Happy learning and enjoy. See you next time.